There is a difference between making mistakes and willfully sinning. How many of you know that? There's a difference between, now, when you sin, you do it willfully. But when I say willfully sinning, I'm talking about the practice of sinning. Meaning this is becoming something that you're going to do. It's a habit. It's something that you have adopted as a part of your lifestyle, and it is sin. Right? There is a difference between making mistakes. Maybe you need, you're uninformed. Maybe, and, and let's get this straight, please. The devil can't make you do anything. Can we get this straight? The devil cannot make you do anything. If the devil could make you sin, God could make you live right. Ain't that good? I need to patent that and put that on a jar of pickles. If the devil can make you sin, then God could make you live right. And there would be no need for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. He would just make us all live right. But because we have choice, we choose to sin. Every time you sin, it's your choice. There is not a demon possession that causes a person to sin. That demon, the reason you're possessed is because you chose the demon. Man, I will preach this in here. That you chose to have, ain't, there is no demon in you that you didn't pick. You chose that devil. You had to. Because if he could just choose you, God could just choose you and be in you and make you never sin. If he could just choose to get in you and make you do stuff. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light does not work that way. It works in accordance with our choice. Always. Always. Amen. Always. It's our, look at somebody say it's your choice. Every single sin you've ever committed, whose choice was it? It's your choice. Friends, get around you, young folks. Try to convince you to do something. It's still what? your choice. Amen. I grew up, you know, under that, you know, a lot of people just come in one prayer. I need prayer because I can't stop sinning. I got a demon in me. No, you know, no. You can stop. And when you stop, guess what the demon's going to do? He's going to leave and find somebody else that'll keep doing it. And that's okay. Some folks ain't ready for this, the demon message. I mean, but that's what these kids need to hear. They need to know stuff they're getting into could put demon spirits in them for the rest of their lives. Amen. Especially when the strong man of the home ain't in place. When there's no really spiritual leadership in the home, the demon will target you. That's what I've been preaching about for the last month. Fathers standing in the doorway of their home and being strong men to protect their children. Amen. Man, I, I can't, I, I thank God for all of the attention that the, the good father message has been getting and all that. But man, I've been getting some haters too. I've been getting men mad at me because I'm preaching what they should be doing. How do you get mad at somebody for exposing darkness? Yeah. Email me, brother. He was all on my stuff. Yes. Isn't that what church was? I had somebody tell me that yesterday. They was like, I don't understand how people get upset about you preaching their stuff if they're doing wrong. What else are you going to preach but wrong stuff? The preacher's supposed to preach what the people are doing wrong. Amen. If you want to hear what the people are doing right, then go to a, a rally. If we just go talk about all your accomplishments, then you need to go to a ceremony where you're getting honored. That's not what, the, in, in here we all filthy rags. Ain't going to be no good news about you in church. 
<laughs> it's all bad compared to God. Once we read the word, we all suck. We terrible. Amen. We're not. That's what church. Ain't that what church is? And you come because you need that. How many of you need that? You need somebody to tell you because you, you'll take three, four days start getting full of yourself, thinking you are the one. You need to come church, find out that you are trash. Let the Lord tell you. Amen. You can be whatever you want to be on the internet, your social media, your Instagram. I mean, somebody was telling me yesterday, they said, man, I didn't know everybody was rich. Everybody's rich and everybody is famous. Everybody is the bomb. Why you think that? Because I went on Instagram, and on Instagram, everybody is the bomb. You live in that cyber world, you need to come to reality when you come in church. Need somebody to tell you, brother, them ain't even good. Real pictures of you. Gracious. First John 5 and 18. We know absolutely that anyone born of God does not deliberately and knowingly practice committing sin. But the one who was begotten of God carefully watches over and protects him. Christ's divine presence within him preserves him against the evil and the wicked one. Does not lay hold or get a grip on him or touch him. So the devil does not come in you if you aren't willfully or knowingly practicing sin. That's what it, that what it just Can I get an amen from somebody? What's wrong with y'all? Says the wicked one does not lay hold. He can't get a grip on you or touch you if you're not doing what he would like for you to do. Amen. So you don't, a demon can't jump in you and you're like, what, what was that? No. You're doing like, come on, come, come on. Knowingly, willfully, practicing. So that's the difference in making mistakes. Young people and old people making mistakes. And willfully choosing a life of sin. Both may require punishment, but one will lead to forgiveness and the other could lead to what? Death. The wages of sin is death. Hebrew 10 and 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth what? No more. So I know some of you grew up Baptist, and they straight butchered this scripture to mean something that it didn't. I mean, they had you so confused about this scripture, you just threw it away. Like, I don't know what this scripture is talking about. No, see, it's talking about after the in and during the dispensation of the, of, 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 of the old time covenant with mixed with a little of the new covenant. But then back, you got to be a true. Dude, that sounds pretty plain to me. If you sin willfully. Meaning you practice sin after you've heard the truth. Then the cross don't work for you. No, oh, that's too hardcore. That's why they got to chop it up. No, see, it can't mean that. Yeah, it means that. Amen. Amen. So it's a blessing to be at ABC, but it could be a curse. It's a blessing to be in a place where we're preaching the truth like this nonstop. But man, you can't be in here and not doing it. Amen. I deal with folks on a weekly basis where the message catches up to them and they got to leave. It catches up to them and they have to leave. Amen. Amen. Some of them be with you for a long time, many years. But if they don't make the necessary changes, the message catches up with them, and they got to, I'm out. That's as far as I can go because I'm not making the changes necessary. Amen. Amen. The desire to live with sin starts at a young age. Well, that's what beatings are for. Look at somebody say beatings. 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 Kids, beatings. For all the kids, just, yes, beating. That's what beatings are for. Because you're going to try to do something wrong when you're young, and you need to get beat. Bible said beat them and what? 
they shall not die. How many of you got beat and you're still here? Amen. You might have to lift your hand like this, but you can get it up there. You can get it up there. She got beat. She's supposed to get beat. Beat. Beat, and they will not die. Didn't say they will not bruise or bleed. It just said they won't die. Amen. The devil usually presents you when you're young, presents you with sin when you are young, so it will plague your life as you grow older. Yeah, presents you with sin. So you get to sneak, you get to quiet, saw something, did something, how you learn how to hide it from your parents when they come to you and say, what did you do? What did you do? You learn how to have nothing. I don't know. You know, you learn all those little things when you're young. And if the beat down is not applied to it, you'll practice those things when you get older. IRS come from, what you do? I don't know, nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, folks breaking rules as an adult. Because they got away with it as a kid. I'm preaching. That's okay. Yeah, so you got to apply. Look at somebody say, apply the beat down. You got to apply the beat down. Hey, man, you may not have kids yet. You may not even be married yet. But just get a belt every now and then and practice on a pillow. Get a pillow and just practice. Mm. Mm. Then if he move, then throw the pillow over there. If he run over there, I'm up. Mm. Draw a face on it. Get a Disney pillowcase with a character on it. Just, mm, mm, mm. Simba. Mm, mm. I told you. Ain't that a good idea? I think, that, I think it's genius. That way you won't be even famous. Hey Y'all scared who's going to whip him? You whip him. I whip. Somebody need to whip him. Call me. Amen. And men, you be the disciplinarian. You do the whooping. Uh-oh. Yes, men, you do the whooping. It's different when you do it. It's different. Amen. Your kids ought to be, I mean, they, you, they love you, they cool with you, but when they get in trouble, they ought to, I mean, you ought to make them cry without saying anything. The devil usually presents you with a sin when you are young, so it will plague your life as you grow older. 2 Timothy 2 and 22. Flee all what? Youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So listen to what this scripture is saying. This scripture is saying that you need to flee what? Lust that were born in you while you were young. So if you're going to follow after faith, charity, right alignment with God, all of these things, you have to flee the things that got a hold or grip you at your, in your young age. You hear me? So this is also telling me that things will grip you in your young age. Okay? So when you're young, the enemy wants to come and cause you to, doing some, cause you to do something secretly. If he can get you to do it successfully, secretly when you're young then when you get old you will struggle with secret sins yeah yeah can I keep going I told you it's going to help everybody today the best way to get sin out of your life while you're young listen young people the best way to get sin out of your life when you're young is to tell your parents. That's it. Tell your parents. I don't care how scary it sounds. I don't care how scared you are. You will be shaking in your boots sometimes. You don't want to go tell them. But I promise you, once you say it and it comes out of your mouth, freedom follows it. Because that pattern will follow you into your adulthood. There are adults that come to this church or that are at the church now 
And when I'm talking to them, they can just talk. And, yeah, man, I went through this, you know. And, and you know, I don't want to know the gory graphic details. Please don't email me all the details. Amen. I don't need no description of your sin. I really don't. You can just give me the word sin, and I'll just use my own mind. Don't describe what you struggling with. And, oh, every time I, I don't want to hear that. Amen. Amen. It's stuff a pastor just don't want to hear. Amen. I don't need to draw no mental images of stuff you doing. Hey, problems you and your wife having, bruh, I got a TV. If I want to see straight out of Compton, I just rent it. I want to hear your version. <laughs> he did it again, Pastor. He threw the knife at me again, but he missed. And then I came back with a vase, and I missed. So I don't need to know you and your wife had a knockdown drag out. I don't need to know you think she's cheating on you. He think you cheat. I don't need to know any of that. You know why? Because once y'all get it together, I'm still feeling some kind of way. Because you done drug, drug me in it emotionally, and y'all don't even have no problem no more. <laughs> Punishment for lying or concealing sin is much greater than, when you will, than what you will receive for being honest. So if you go to your mother, go to your father, say, Mother, a uh, father said, I saw something on the internet I shouldn't have seen, and it made me do something I shouldn't have done, and I just want to tell you so you can maybe pray for me. Instant freedom comes. Instant freedom. However they reacted, don't even matter. You are free. You know why? Because you turn the light on. Darkness can't dwell when the light is on. But if you keep it and hide it, You'll learn how to keep and hide things. And you keep it dark. And where there's darkness, there's always sin. Can I keep preaching? So the punishment, even if you did something you shouldn't have. Mama, I took the car and I drove up to the store. And you told me not to drive. And I know I'm just 10. <laughs> You're going to get beat. But tell the truth, because if you come out and tell the truth about it, it may feel bad, but it's going to turn the light on, and you won't be hiding something. Because once you get used to hiding something, you'll continue to hide. Can I tell the truth in here? Oh, if some of us have had, th had this message some years ago, oh my goodness, things would be different. Oh, Rashata. It would be different up in here. Amen. But we had adults. Some of them was preaching to us and they was hiding stuff. They couldn't help hiders if you are hider. Amen. It's okay. But you got to be young, saved, and what? Free. Free. Ephesians 6 and 2. Honor thy father and mother. Honor means put them first. Put them first. Put them first so you honor them, even with your honesty. This is the first commandment with promise. So you put your mother or father first. You know why you put them first? Did you eat this morning? Where did you get them clothes you have on? You have a cell phone? A digital device? They've taken care of you, and you're going to hide stuff from them? You're going to hide it on the device that they're paying the data for? My goodness, I'd break it over your head, bro. You, I'm paying for the data that you're doing dumb stuff with? Honor your father and mother. If a person violates you or sins against you in any way, make sure you talk about it with your parents. Amen. 
Because as soon as you tell your parents, somebody touched me inappropriately, somebody said something inappropriately, somebody did something inappropriately, I don't care who it is, as soon as you tell them, instant freedom. But if you don't let it out, you'll begin to blame yourself. You'll begin to look at yourself differently based on what was done to you. Hiding something like this could cause you to blame yourself or even act out those same violations in your own behavior. Amen? When a person is molested, the thoughts that come into their head is, what about me caused them to want to molest me? That question has to be answered by your parents. That's why you tell them. You see what I'm saying? If you answer that question in your own mind, you may answer it wrong, and it changes how you view yourself. Yeah. So if something like that occurs, I don't care who, what, why. If that occurs, you tell your parents so that when you ask the question, what would make them do that to me? Your parents can answer it and say, the devil. I may not even know what made it and do it to you, but I know what I'm about to do. It's going to feel like the devil. Amen. But you tell your parents, that way they can answer the question for you and you don't feel a certain way about yourself. Because that's all the devil needs is for you to feel like you caused some kind of violation and then you'll be a victim of it for the rest of your life. If you look down on yourself, you'll devalue yourself. If you devalue yourself, then you'll live a life full of hiding porn, masturbation, lose your virginity, all this stuff because you, you don't have any value. Because you devalued yourself because of what someone else did. You need to tell your parents. That's how you get free. That's where freedom comes. Turn the light on. Amen. Oh, this is pretty heavy, huh? Hiding. Oh, James 5 and 16. Confess your faults. What? One to another. Pray for one another that ye may be what? Healed. So the minute you tell your parents, healing comes. When we communicate with our parents, we stop the enemy from what? Secretly tormenting us. That's the last thing he wants you to do is tell your parents. He'll put fear in you so you'll be afraid to tell them. When in actuality, you should be telling them. Because once you tell them, you stop the enemy from secretly tormenting you. Communication is the way we can bear each other's burdens and live without carrying what? Heavy loads. Communication. Talking. Talking. How are you going to bear somebody's burdens and you don't know what their burden is? You have to talk. Talking. Amen? Talking. Can I keep going? Living free from willfully sinning is possible when you remove things that promote sin from our lives. You can't have stuff in your life that promotes sin and be free from sin. You crazy. You're just crazy. Right? Some things are designed to promote sin and harden our hearts toward God. That's the way it was designed. It was designed to do that. 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So he's saying, what? How, how, how is where I'm dwelling and they're my people? How are you going to do that and keep idols in your life? 
How are you going to have the devil's stuff and be in Christ? That's inconsistent. Amen? Sinful music, movies, friends will always influence us to do things we shouldn't. Hey. Amen. You, you, how long have you lived as you? You know yourself. You know there's certain movies you can't go see. You know Blank the Police was your jam. They played it at your wedding. The whole wedding party had billy clubs. Why did you go see Straight Outta Compton? Hey, it's stuff, some stuff you can't watch. And you just tell them, I mean, I don't need to see that movie. Amen. You was, you, when you wasn't saved, you was a pimp. You was a straight pimp. Why you got the Dolomite collection? Human tornado, all of them. <laughs> Petey Pete Weestrom. You got the whole Rudy Ray Moore extended edition behind the scenes. But you know what your struggle is. There's certain things you can't do. Hey, amen. Yeah. Yes. You got some stuff you can't watch, some music you can't listen to. Some shows on TV you can't watch. You better look at somebody and say, you better know yourself. Why would you tempt yourself and you already on the line crazy? you like right there. I mean, you got one foot on the line and one foot on a banana peel. you about to go over any moment. Why are you playing with that? Amen. You got a problem with lust and you watching all the beauty pageants. Oh, I'm watching Miss USA tonight. Brother, will you turn that off? And not all, all 50 contestants, not one of them resembles your wife. 50 contestants, not one of them. <laughs> your wife never, she didn't even look like that when she was a kid. Why are you... <laughs> You got them all DVR on tape. <laughs> I'm going to watch it later when I get out of Heroes. <laughs> Miss Universe. Miss Universe. I, gotta, I always watch the pageants. I got to watch the pageants. Those are contests. Turn that off, brother. You got a problem with lust? Why are you watching it? Amen. Women, too. Amen. <laughs> Y'all know, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Sinful music, movies, friends always influence us to do things we shouldn't. We must remove these things when possible so that we will not make our way hard. Why would you make your way harder and then feel bad when you fall? You putting stuff in front of you you have to trip over and then fall and feel bad. First Thessalonians 5 and 22. Abstain from what? All appearance of evil. How much is all? All. Quit trying to find a rational way to, to, to have it. Oh, these lowrider magazines. I love motorcycles. Dude, you looking at them women in bikinis standing up. You think we crazy? You got a stack taller than me. Got the 1950 edition where the women was bigger. Motorcycle had three wheels. They hadn't invented the two-wheeler yet. <laughs> hey, 
That's, I love these motorcycles. I just, you know, I just love the motorcycles. Can't use the toilet, stack up motorcycle magazines. Just, <laughs> I am out of control. Let me stop this. But abstain from what? All of some stuff you can't do. And you know what? Some stuff none of us can do. Amen. None of us. All oh, my cousins are having this reception at the club, then you can't go. Because we're saved in here. Amen. We're saved. Well, you can't go to the club. I don't care what they're doing in there. Reading God's word, being around other young believers, and being obedient to your parents is what God desires. Being obedient to your parents, reading the word, you have to, at a young age, you have to fall in love with the Bible. You got to get a version you can understand, and you have to develop some kind of appetite for it, because if you don't, when you get older, you will discard it. Your desire to read God's word is birthed in you when you're young. The way I fell in love with the Bible when I was around, I mean, I read it when I was smaller, but when I got a little older, 16, 17, 18 years old, I, well, I, I told y'all this before about chick tracks. So I started reading chick tracks, and they were like comics and that kind of thing, and they all had a message in it and scriptures and, you know, John. Jack Chick is just straight. I mean, he's straight up stuff. I mean, they, you know, they, they hated what he was doing way back in the day. But I would order them, and, and, and uh, my dad would order, have them for church, and I would read through them and different things. They would pass them out or whatever, but I would read them. And I developed a love for the Bible and the word and the truth because I was reading truth in those comics, and then I was comparing it to the lies that folks was telling. And that was interesting to me. I was like, how can the devil just perpetrate a fraud like this? That was interesting. That got my juices for us. I began to really get into the word and the Bible at a very young age because I wanted to know the truth. Amen. And I don't know what it takes for you or what the situation was or whatever, but you have to develop a love for the word. You have to at a young age because when you're older, you'll get you, you're already used to not reading it. And depending on what people are saying. You'll never overcome a sin struggle if you don't read the word. Hey, right, brother, I just keep, man, I keep falling back and forth, falling in it, keep falling in it. Well, man, I mean, are you reading the word? I mean, I tried that. Get out of here. Tried it. You tried the word and it didn't work. Then you need a straight jacket. How you tried the word and it didn't work? Pleasing God can only occur when we willfully remove sinful things out of our lives. 2 Timothy, I mean 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord. And this is where everybody stopped. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And they stopped right there. Because the real part comes after. And what? Touch not the what? Okay, let's, let's, let's rewind. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Then he says, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will what? I will receive. Oh, this is good stuff. Summary! Being young and saved in 2016 can be what? Challenging. It requires extra effort and most importantly, God's power. You won't make it without God's power. Amen? The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. Anybody know about that? 
That's the only way you're going to make it. Amen. I'm not talking about one day it hit you, you experienced it, and then 10 years later it derailed and ran dry. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about knowing God and his power and receiving his power in you and keeping it there. His power is based on your belief. So his power is based on you knowing him. You don't know him, you don't have his power. God's power comes from him. So in order to have his power, we must what? Get closer to him. Get closer to him. How are you going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and everything you want to watch and listen to is full of sin? You're not close to him. How can you be full of his power and every other word come out your mouth when you get mad is a cuss word? That ain't full of his power. You full of cussing. And it just needs the right circumstance to come out. How you full of the Holy Ghost and need a cigarette? You don't need the Holy Ghost and nicotine too. You need the nicotine to calm you down. Oh, this, I gotta go, man. I gotta have a cigarette. Well, are the fruits of the Spirit supposed to do that? But you're telling me you don't have the fruits of the Spirit if you need that. Amen. See, ain't nobody talking about it. Because see, we want to talk about filled with the Holy Ghost, foaming in the mouth, falling out, and speaking in tongues. And that's all you got, brother. Full of the Holy Ghost is the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. If those things didn't come, then I don't know what you full of. You full of crap. That's what you're full of. You didn't get the fruits. We shall know them by their what? Fruits. That's how we know. How you know you're filled with the Holy Ghost, brother? There's only one way to know. Fruits. Anybody can speak in tongues. You can watch a karate movie and learn how to do that. Anybody can buck, buck and shout and knock a roll down. You do that at the football game, bro. I mean, I... Amen. You, anybody can black out and just, oh, just fall. Any, I, man, that stuff don't. I watch it and, well, praise God, I hope something happened. But I'm not entertained by that and I'm not moved by that. I want to see what you're going to do when you get up and collect yourself and go back to them situations you was in. How you feel with the Holy Ghost and all your kids unsaved? How you feel with the Holy Ghost and don't nobody wanna, want none of the God you have? Yeah, the fruits of the Spirit is what changes people. Are you operating in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness? The closer we get to God, the further we get from what? Sin. We are only as strong as our relationship with God and our parents. Uh-oh. Yeah, young folks, you're only, a, you can't have a stronger, that's why we don't have a youth pastor. We got a youth director. He's a minister. He's here to teach you, not hear your problems. Because your parents are supposed to hear your problems. With redirecting, when you come to him and tell him something personal, it's going to get redirected right back to your parents. Because the parents at ABC are the youth pastors. So you got a word for your youth pastor. They're right in your house. He, she, one of them's in there. And that's who you talk to. But you're only as strong as your relationship with God and your parents because God put the parent in your life for that reason. Honor your father and mother. You don't skip over precepts to get to God. You don't skip over God's truth. You will live a life hide in sin and shame, and you're going to ultimately embarrass your parents. If you don't talk. And I'm not talking about talk to church leaders. You talk to them. That's your church leader.
a whole lot of women, man, if they had opened up their mouth and talked to their mama before they lost their virginity, they'd still have it. They'd talk to their father about it. They'd still have it. Amen. Yeah. That's what God wants. We cannot attempt to grow closer to God. You know, I got folks that tell me, I got to say, I, folks don't, you know, folks don't come to this church. Friends of mine, some of them, they don't want to come here. And I tell them, so why you don't come here, man? Because yeah, my, it's too much I got to fix and correct. I don't even, I don't, that just don't make no sense to me. Your life is jacked to the max and you ain't going to try to put a dent in it? Dude, put a dent in it. Come on, let's work on it. We all in, aren't we all in here working on stuff? Everybody in here working on something. Some of us were some jive suckers for we, a, a, a few months ago. But we got to a place where it's being preached and talked about so we can keep it in the forefront of our minds. Nothing is more important than our children. Nothing. But in order to help them, we got to help our crazy selves first. So we put ourselves in a place where we're hearing the truth. Does it slap us? Yes. Kick our tail sometimes? Yes. Walk out of here injured some Sundays. But I'd rather be injured by the truth than live untrue. <laughs> oh, a slap by God is way better than the consequence of sin. Consequence of sin lasts for generations. Yo, kids, 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 and kids, 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 crazy. Because of sin. But a little slap upside the head could change everything. I'm putting myself in the line of fire. Get me, Lord, so I don't get got. Amen. Oh, I know that was ghetto. We cannot attempt to grow close to God and not be open and honest with our parents. Amen. God ain't, God ain't in the secret meetings with you. In the middle of the night, oh, Lord, this is, I can't tell nobody else. Amen. And you ain't got to tell everything. I'm not talking to the kids now. I'm talking to these adults. Don't expose your wife or your husband to nobody. You go talk to them. Amen. Hush your mouth sometimes. You got to recover from that. So just, just hush. Every detail. And brother, I just want to confess something to you. Your wife looked real good to me. Don't get shot. Bro, you come tell me that, I might shoot you. Man, I'll be preaching from a speakerphone in jail. From the glass. Glass on the phone. Tell the saints I said. <laughs> Why would you? I mean, if we're going to be in covenant, bro, I just have to be honest. That's a beat down. That's a beat down. And, it, and God would not even mind. That would be warranted. Lord, will turn his head. Go on and get him. Just go on and get him. Got five minutes. <laughs> so that, that's when heaven really does have a ghetto. <laughs> that's the ward in heaven. <laughs> the devil will use a bad relationship with our parents as a tool to bring shame, hurt, and sin into our lives secretly. Y'all hear that? Use a bad relationship with our parents as a tool to bring shame, hurt, and sin in our lives. This is why parents should never argue in front of their children. They hear you in there. I'll kill you. I'll kill you first. What? Pop, 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 pop. What? <laughs> they, 
ain't gonna ever come. They ain't gonna ever come. Man, they done, they done chopped their arm off outside. They still ain't coming to you. Like, bro, what's all this blood? I, I lost that yesterday. I just wasn't gonna come talk to you about it. <laughs> Don't wanna talk to you about nothing. Heard you in there shooting. I didn't shoot her, I just shot in the eye. <laughs> Daddy, God. <laughs> Good gracious. <laughs> they ain't going to ever come talk to you. So you don't fight like that in front of them. And you oh, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm gone. Three days later, where's daddy? He's still gone. But they don't want to tell you anything bad. Because they don't want to be the cause of you being gone. Can I tell the truth in here? Man, I'm preaching in here. Good gracious. In order to truly live young, saved, and free, we must keep the lines of communication open and live honestly with our parents. Amen. Some of you, some of you 30 ain't got to go tell your mama something. Build that relationship up. You need her. You need her. You don't know what to do with your kids. You need her. This will help us as we grow older to keep the devil in the what? Man, the devil hates the light. He dwells in darkness. He hates the light. So if you keep the light on, he has nowhere to hide. The more light we have around us, the less places he can hide. Psalms 144 and 11, David says, rid me and deliver me from the hand of what? Bad kids. Bad kids, because his kids were bad. Bad kids, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of what? Lies. Bad kids that won't tell the truth. Rid me of them. Deliver me from them. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their what? Plants that grow up in their youth. If they're plants in their youth, when they're adults, they're trees. Plants in their youth. That our daughters may be as what? Cornerstones. Polished after the similitude or similar to a beautiful palace. Let our children be this way. Is what David is saying. And that's what I'm saying today. Young folks, keep your parents involved in your life. Just like I preach to the mothers and the fathers. I'm telling you, as the time draws near, what I keep telling you about this fellowship thing, what the Bible says, forsake not the fellowship one to another, even the more as you see the day approaching, as the end comes, we become more valuable to each other. We become like silver and gold. You know how I know? Because when you leave this place and go on your jobs and see folks that are devoid of truth, folks that don't believe, folks that are in all kinds of foolishness, you begin to realize how valuable like-minded believers really are. And that same value of like-minded believers, young folks, your parents are more valuable, especially your parents that are in here. They brought you here to get truth so you don't have to grow up in a struggle. We in here shedding struggles, but our children shouldn't have to shed no struggle. They should be able to step right over that and live free from it. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Everybody in here with 
If your kid participated in this week, well, even if they didn't participate this week, I want you to just bring your child up here with you. Bring them up here. Bring your kids up here. All of them, just from to and fro. Bring them on up. Just bring them up. Wake them up if they sleep. They need to be there. If they're going to cry, then keep them sleep. The Lord will still work. Bring them up here. Bring them up here. Those of you without kids, y'all just kind of back up and let's make some room. Bring them up here. Let's move this podium so we can make a little more room. Watch that iPad, Doc. Did you get you? Amen. Bring your children. You come stay with me, Johnny. Come on. This Youth Sunday is more significant than you think it is. You know, I, I just couldn't wait to have a church so that the kids could be over the service like old school. That To me, that's just the bomb. I know it's old and traditional, but I just like that. Let them lead the service and do all that. Man, I, I, I've been waiting on this moment. But the service is more significant than that. God knows that the, how important the fellowship is, and I've been teaching about how important fellowship is. But the fellowship among your family, where your children can openly talk to you about what is going on in their lives, the importance of that, you'll never understand how important that is. Most of you in here, adults, your struggle came because you couldn't talk to your parents about it. We want to open the line of communication in here so that parents and children, can, youth can feel free, no matter what age they are, to walk into daddy's room, walk into mama's room, walk in there when both of you are in there and say, mama, I did this. Daddy, I did this. This is going on. Something happened. I need to talk to y'all about it. And that line needs to stay open. That is where the enemy gets them. Right there. Man, you learned something so powerful today. This, this message was way more powerful than you realize. This is why the enemy's been after you all week. This is why the devil did all he did this week. For the last couple of weeks. Because he knew what I was going to do. And he knew that the truth you would learn tonight was going to turn some lights on. And if those lights are on, darkness can't be there. If your children learn that they can walk in and tell you what is on their heart, it will protect them for years to come. This is important. Very, very important. Put your hands on your children. Everyone bow your heads. Mothers, fathers, put your hands on your children. Because we are changing generations today. Generations of young people are changing. Children, their seeds will change. The way they approach their children is changing because of the way you are approaching them. This is a key moment in our history as a church because we are fortifying the next generation. With your heads bowed, I want you to begin to pray for your children. Pray that the line of communication is open. Pray for forgiveness. If they are holding or carrying anything against you for any reason, Pray for forgiveness. Pray. They may have seen something they shouldn't have seen, heard something they shouldn't have heard, and it may have blocked that line of communication. If that is there, Lord, remove it. I repent for it. I'm not too big to repent. But I know the enemy cannot spoil a man's goods unless he first binds the strong man. So if it's the strong man that let him down, Lord, forgive me. I repent. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Let them in. Our 
pray right now that the lines of communication stay open. Children, the heart of the Father will be manifested in them and the heart of the children back to the fathers. And the door will be open for them to talk, for them to confess, for them to repent, for them to say what it is they need to say so they will not live a life full of struggle. The shame I carry, the pain I carry, the regret I carry because of secret sin. My children don't have to endure that. Open up those lines, Lord. Let them talk. Once they turn the light on, they no longer have to live in darkness. In Jesus' name, in the name that is above every name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Give them a good old hug. Things changed in this place today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.